finished working on the battery compartment in my 180D, and I decided it, this would be a good opportunity to shoot a video and talk specifically about some of the things you can do to help prevent battery problems. Battery problems, you say? Well, if you've been around old cars, you know they can create all kinds of problems. Rusty cables, bad connections, rusted out battery trays and holders, and this 180D was not any different. As you can see right now, the battery does not look that bad. But look at this picture. I'm going to take you back to what it looked like when I purchased the car. Notice the rust. That's very typical. And the corrosion on the battery terminals. Let's begin by talking about batteries. There are two types that are commonly used in most vehicles today. On my right here is a lead acid battery. And on my left is an Optima gel cell battery. The lead acid battery has acid in it. That's why it's called lead acid. And this acid tends to gas. And the gassing coming out of the battery is the number one reason for most corrosion that occurs in and around a battery compartment. The gel cell battery, on the other hand, does not have liquid acid inside and it is, does not gas off. So I prefer to use Optima batteries, particularly in my old cars that don't get driven a lot and I don't have time to check the maintenance on a regular basis. I know the Optima battery is more expensive, but let me tell you, it's well worth it. Especially if you leave your lights on, they tend to not drain down as quickly as lead acid batteries and they have much more power, particularly when using uh, them with diesel engines. This is a lead acid battery from my newly acquired 180D. And since it's fairly new, I'm not going to convert to a gel cell battery at this time. But I do want to show you some of the things I've done to cure the rust problems that existed on the car when I bought it and to prevent further rust problems from occurring in the future. The first thing I did was I thoroughly cleaned the battery tray with phosphoric acid and then coated it with Miracle Paint. This amazing product is available on our website. That will seal uh, the rusty metal and prevent corrosion from occurring under the battery in the future. I also decided to use a battery mat. Some of you may not be familiar with this product. Um, you can purchase it, this at almost any auto parts store. You put it under the battery and it tends to absorb any of those acid fumes which might be gassing off of the battery. If you look here, you know what I went ahead and spray painted it. Uh, flat black along the forward edge because I really didn't want the yellow showing from underneath the battery. Along with the battery mat, there are three other products I use to minimize battery corrosion. The first is a good battery post contact cleaner. These can be purchased at any auto parts store. You need a very clean contact on the battery post to prevent corrosion. Underneath the battery cables, I use battery terminal washers. These washers are, have a special uh, chemical in them to help absorb any battery acid that might be gassing out of the posts themselves. And finally, I use a battery protector and seal. This is sprayed onto the battery cable and post after it's cleaned and tightened on the battery. Let me show you how I use these products on my 6.9 here. The battery is in a nice, easy to get to location. Begin by removing the cables. On Mercedes-Benz, the negative is the ground cable. So always remove the ground cable first and install it last to prevent arcing and sparking off the positive post here. Most of these nuts are 13 millimeter. Completely remove both clamps. Then take the post and cable cleaner and begin by cleaning both of the cable ends with the male part of the tool, as you can see here. Then you can reverse it and use the other end to get on top the posts and rotate the cleaner until both of them are a nice shiny lead color. Then I'll take the washers that I mentioned earlier, put the red washer on the positive post, put the green washer on the negative post. Then I will install and tighten the positive post. And finally, the negative post cable goes on the battery and is tightened. And then finally, I'll use my 
battery protector and sealer and spray a thin coat around the post and cable as you can see there. And that will dry and provide a pr protective coating to prevent further corrosion. In conclusion, I want to mention two other battery maintenance tools that you might find handy. The first is a cable puller. This tool is really handy if you have a battery cable that's frozen to the post. You simply spread the puller, put it over the sides of the cable, and then you can turn it right off the battery. You do not want to try to pry an old corroded uh, cable off a post or you'll damage the battery. The other tool is a battery cable spreader. This is real handy if you are installing a different battery in your car and you need to spread the cable so it'll fit over the post. You can simply remove the bolt, insert the spreader into the cable and then squeeze and you can see how it just opens up the cable. Now, I've showed you all the tricks about taking care of your battery. I'm convinced that battery or the lack of battery maintenance was probably the number one reason for getting uh, stalled on the road in an old car. You can't believe how many hoods I've opened up in the past where you see a corroded old battery post or some rusty old battery tray. So take this as an encouragement, but also take it as a warning. Get out there and take care of your battery today.